Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to this uh, multilingual session uh, where we have uh, Vipul Riki doing the first part. Um, and then the second part, we will have other singers joining from a different part of the world. And we also have panel speakers who will be joining from different parts of the world. So when I say good afternoon, I also uh, want to welcome everybody from different parts of the world with saying good evening and good morning as well. Um, so this multilingual session um, in two parts um, brings into focus um, the value of oral tradition, folk tunes and mystic poetry in the subcontinent, contributing to the broad canvas of world music. We will discuss about Sufism in the first part, which originated in Baghdad, Iraq, and has produced a large body of multilingual poetry in Arabic, Turkish, Kurdish, Persian, Bengali, Hindi, Urdu, Sindhi, Punjabi, and other regional languages. And we will see some of those influences as well. And that has been the esoteric philosophical base for engaging with Islam in the world. Folk songs of Kabir, about 1440 to 1518, and other Bhakti and Sufi saints, Sufi poets from India, sharpen the definition of the self through both experience and imagination, teach peace, equality, and diversity, as opposed to certain constructed identities based on, for example, the legalities of Islam, which is just as important, but we are trying to show the different strands of expressing the other religious sides as well. So why decolonization and why bring this kind of session to a festival of decolonization of knowledge? Um, before we kind of get into any discussion, I want to also state that, you know, SOAS has an established reputation of engaging with non-Western music through ethnomusicological inquiries, hosting different practitioners, field research. We also have world music festivals among various other cultural and artistic events. But this festival specifically has opened the door to question modes of inquiry within disciplines and resulting perspectives, allowing the freedom to question our own sense of the research problems and why some ideas continue to occupy our minds both within as well as outside the academia. So outreach is definitely a very important aspect of this festival as well. And by focusing on the lasting influence of Sufi music, this session therefore decolonizes certain constructed identities that are based on religion, gender, and nation. And we all know that these kind of questions stem from the colonial legacy of rule and divide. The globalization of Sufi music is also a very recent trend, but it requires an understanding of the local language, meanings in lyrics, and the cultural product of what we are going to see today, Kawali, as an expression of adaptation through regional language and local artistic practices and experience. So the focus is on the musician, the environs of the music production, its expression and demonstration. So there is liberty to engage in multilingual dialogues, which is also the headline of this session today. And we will also see how different languages, different dialects even help to shape some understandings that are not quite studied in mainstream courses or modules um, related to religion and religious practices. So the other thing that multilingualism does or it allows us 
for practical purposes is the freedom of expression and thought with some degree of translation that uh, I have to do for the larger audience and explain some of the songs. We haven't really attempted subtitling songs for the sessions. Um, the first one, of course, Bipul is going to engage with a lot of explanations, I believe, because he's also a very established translator. So we have that advantage. Uh, for the second session, I'm relying more on the discussion side and what artists themselves have to say about their songs and their experience of um, doing those songs as well. Um, so we will begin with some established verses of Kabir and its journey from Bipul Riki and go on to exploring the impact of the Kawal, revisiting the critical question of the colonial legacy of, colo uh, of communalism in South Asian borderlands, which is also a question of the present moment. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce and welcome Vipul Riki, uh, who is a singer, poet, storyteller, and translator immersed in the oral traditions of Kabir and other Bhakti and Sufi poets for over a decade. And he brings equal emphasis to the insightful poetry and folk tunes revered by Hindus and Muslims. He's also known for his Kabir project that involves writing, translation, research, curation, and the creation of a vast digital archive called Ajab Shahar. And v Vipul has also written extensively novels, translations dealing with oral traditions. So without ado, I want to um, ask Vipul to take over. Over to you, Vipul, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much Sanjukta for that very warm introduction. And I'm delighted to be part of the Suez Festival of Ideas and to uh, contribute uh, the verses and uh, philosophy and the tradition of Kabir, really. Because Kabir, uh, as uh, you said, is, uh, was a 15th century poet. But since his time, Kabir has become much larger than that person who lived in Varanasi uh, in North India in the 15th century. Because Kabir himself uh, did not read or write. He was a working class man. He was a lower caste man. Uh, he was a weaver. Uh, and so he was someone who was very much of the people. Uh, he was very much subaltern. He lived uh, a very uh, normal life with, with his family, with work to do, with the kids to feed and so on. And at the same time, he sang these songs. He did not write them because uh, he did not know how to read or write because educate, uh, literacy was colonized by the upper castes. So, um, and then what has happened since that time is that these verses have just radiated out from Varanasi and spread all over the subcontinent, going as far as Bengal and going as far as Pakistan on the other side. And they are sung now by many people. And what is more, people now contribute to this tradition. So uh, actively, people write songs and they can say at the end of the song, Kahe Kabir Suno Bhai Sado. And if the tradition accepts this song, it can become a Kabir song. And so Kabir has become an icon that the people of this land have adopted for themselves. Kabir becomes a statement of truth. He is a symbol for, of a statement of truth. And everyone has a right to participate in this tradition. So this tradition very much belongs to the people. And it's an ever-growing tradition of songs. And so uh, for this session of um, around multilingualism, I want to bring some songs from different parts of the land. I want to sing in Malvi. I will start uh, with a song in Malvi, a uh, dialect of Hindi from Central India, Madhya Pradesh. And I will uh, sing, a, sing from Gujarat, from Rajasthan. I will sing in Urdu. And if we still have time, I will sing a Baul song in Bengali. So uh, all these languages and all these ideas in the Bhakti and Sufi tradition in this land, in our vast land, sort of communicate with each other. They talk to each other. And as you will see through the songs, these ideas are constantly speaking to each other. And they relate the social, the reality of uh, religious fundamentalism or communalism or caste hierarchy or gender oppression 
to a much larger question of the self, what is my place in the world and what is really my life about and how these two interact at the same time. One, not, one is not ignored, no one, neither one is ignored in favor of the other. So let me uh, begin with a song uh, from a poet in the Kabir tradition called Gulabi Das and this song is from Malwa. So it's in Malvi uh, from Madhya Pradesh. And it invites you into a new country, a strange country. It says, Tam to ao hamara des. Come to my country, come to my land. It's an invitation. Batai daun thane bhav nagri. I will show you the city of feeling. Batai daun thane prem nagri. I will show you the city of love. So if you want to see the city of feeling and the city of love, come into my country, come into my land. And then in a series of verses, he beautifully describes the great beauty of the world and yet the fragility and the impermanence of everything, how everything is constantly passing away. So he says, Kachi Kali Kachnar Karigar Kaya Ajabbani. The Kachnar flower is very delicate, very fragile, and the body is like that. It blooms for a certain period and then it fades away and it's gone. Haldi patangiya ro rang urjayega heli kal ki ghadi. The golden color of the wasp, so beautiful, which shines in the sunlight, but at the moment of death, it fades, it goes away. So there is this great beauty, at the same time, there is the fact of death, of passing, of impermanence, ephemerality. Mat karje kaya ro ahankar, kaya thari cham sevani. Don't be so proud of this body, this flesh, because in the end it's just leather. And in the end he says, Gave Gulabi Das, Bhajan Se Mari Kaya Sudri. Gulabi Das, the poet says, Bhajan has a dual meaning in, in the language. Bhajan means song, which I will sing for you, but it also means meditation, to remember, to remember the divine, to remember the divine in your own self, in your own breath, in your own body. So he says this practice of singing the divine has improved me, has made me better. Eji joge wo atme aur phule so kumla जो चूने सो डही पड़े जन में सो मरी जाए Whatever blooms has to fade, whatever is built falls apart and whatever is born has to die. तम तो आओ हमारा हो देश बताइ दाम थाने भाव नगरी हाँ चालो बुरा सारा देश बताइ दाम थाने प्रेम नगरी हाँ भाव नगरी हो ये प्रेम नगरी हाँ भाव नगरी हो ये प्रेम नगरी तम तो चालो गुरा सारा देश बताइ दाम थाने भाव नगरी काची कली हो कचनार कारीगर काया अजब बनी हाँ काची कली हो कचनार कारीगर काया अजब बनी हाँ अजब बनी हो या मैं बगनी हाँ अजब बनी हो या मैं एब घनी तम तो आओ हमारा हो देश बताइ दाम थाने 
भावनगरी हाल दी पतंगे यारो रंग उड़ जाव दहेली काल की घड़ी हल्दी पतंगे यारो रंग उड़ जाव दहेली काल की घड़ी हाँ काल की घड़ी ओ हेली काल की घड़ी हाँ काल की घड़ी ओ हेली काल की घड़ी तुम तो आओ हमारा हो देश बैदा खाने भावनगरी हाँ मत कर जे काया रो अहकार काया हो थारी चाम से मत कर जे काया रो अहकार काया हो थारी चाम से बनी हा चाम से बनी हो या में हा चाम से बनी हो या में ए बनी तुम तो आओ हमारा हो देश बैद खान भावनगरी हा भी हो दास भजन से मारी काया सुधरी हा गावे गोला भी हो दास भजन से मारी काया सुधरी आ, काया सुधरी ओ बिली एब बिसरी हा काया सुधरी ओ बिली एब बिसरी तुम तो आओ हमारा हो देश बैद थाने भावनगरी भावनगरी ओ हेली प्रेम नगरी हा भावनगरी ओ हेली प्रेम नगरी तुम तो चालो बोरा सारा देश बैद थाने भावनगरी बैद थाने प्रेम नगरी बैद थाने Bhavnagari. Thank you. So that song uh, was from Malwa, like I said, uh, and uh, it speaks about impermanence. And the next song that I will uh, share with you is from uh, Kutch, Gujarat, which is the extreme uh, western part. of uh, india bordering pakistan close to sind and uh, this uh, song also begins with the same idea that we must reckon with impermanence uh, so it says chun chun maati mahal banaya murakh kahe ghar mera laying brick upon brick you built a great house and then the fool says it's my house na ghar mera na ghar tera hai jagat mein phera it's not my house it's not uh, your house it's no one's house this this world is a merry go round things are constantly changing hands you don't own anything you can't keep anything khak mein khap jana re banda maati se mil jana thoda karo abhiman ek din pavan sa ud jana one day you will return to dust don't be so proud don't be so arrogant you will be blown away like the dust so in a sense these poets why do they stress on the idea of impermanence so much and why do they stress not taking ourselves so seriously not being proud arrogant 
Why is this important? It's also important so that we don't become entrenched in our identities. I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim, I am this, I am a man, I am a woman, I am upper caste, I am lower caste. When you become entrenched in these identities, then all the fundamentalism begins. So he's constantly trying to, they are constantly trying to point out to us to go beyond these identities. To arrive at something which is more distilled, which is more you, which is more yours, even more than this. He says, uh, it's a song by Kabir, he says, Jada pero, jina pero, pero mal mal sacha. Rupiah Pawal Masru Pero Toy Maran Keriasa. Whether you wear coarse cloth or you wear very fine cloth or you wear the finest silks, it doesn't make any difference. In the end, you have to die. Sona Pero Rupa Pero Pero Hirla Sacha Var Var Motida Pero Toy Maran Keriasa. You can wear all the gold in the world, all the silver, all the pearls and the jewelry. It doesn't matter. It makes no difference because in the end, you still have to go. In the end, he says, "Ik din jio, do din jio, jio baras pachasa. Kahe kabir suno bhai sado, toy maran keriyasa. You may live for one day or two days or a long time. It makes no difference. In the end, you have to come to the same thing. And the idea is also to prepare us, to prepare us for death, to prepare ourselves for death." And death is an important theme in Sufi poetry and in Kabir's poetry. So this song I learned from a folk singer in Kutch, Gujarat. And the first song was from Malwa. अर चुन चुन माटी मेल बनाया मुरख कहे घर में आ अर चुन चुन माटी मेल बनाया मुरख कहे घर में आ अर ना घर मेरा ना घर तेरा है जगत में फेरा खाक में खप जाना रे बंदा माटी से मिल जाना अरे थोड़ा करो अभिमान एक दिन पवन सा उड़ जाना अरे नहीं करो अभिमान एक दिन पवन सा उड़ जाना अरे जाड़ा पेरो जीना पेरो पेरो मल मल साचा अरे जाड़ा रे पेरो जीना रे पेरो पेरो मल मल साचा अरे रुपया पावल मसरु पेरो तो मरन के रिया सा अरे रुपया पावल मसरु पेरो तो मरन के रिया सा खाक में खप जाना रे बंदा माटी से मिल जाना अरे थोड़ा करो अभिमान एक दिन पवन सा उड़ जाना अरे नहीं करो अभिमान एक दिन पवन सा उड़ जाना अर सोना पेरो रूपा पेरो पेरो हिरला साचा अर सोना रे पेरो रूपा रे पेरो पेरो हिरला साचा अर वार वार मोतीड़ा पेरो तो इमरन के रिया सा अर वार वार मोतीड़ा पेरो तो इमरन के रिया सा खाक में खप जाना रे बंदा माटी से मिल जाना अर थोड़ा करो अभिमान एक दिन पवन सा उड़ जाना अर नहीं करो अभिमान एक दिन पवन सा उड़ जाना
अरे एक दिन जियो दो दिन जियो जियो बरस पर चासा अरे एक दिन जियो दो दिन जियो जियो बरस पर चासा अरे कहत कबीरा सुनो भाई साधो तो ही मरण के आसा अरे भणत कबीरा सुनो मेरा साधो तो ही मरण के आसा खाक में खप जाना रे बंदा माटी से मिल जाना अरे थोड़ा करो अभिमान निकले पवन सा उड़ जाना अरे नहीं करो अभिमान निकले पवन सा उड़ जाना अरे चुन चुन माटी मेल बनाया मूर्ख गए घर मेरा अरे चुन चुन माटी मेल बनाया मूर्ख गए घर मेरा अरे चुन चुन माटी मेल बनाया मूर्ख गए घर मेरा थैंक यू So after we have confronted the fact of death, we can come into this other country that the first song was talking about. It was inviting it, inviting us to the poet's country. Come into my land. Come into my country. What is this country? So the next song, which is from Rajasthan, from Gujarat, we go to Rajasthan, and uh, this song is in Marwadi, which is the local dialect in uh, Rajasthan, and this song. Uh, talks about this country kabir's country and what is kabir's country like he says amare re desh mein nahi dhara nahi gagna nahi koi pavan na pani in my land there is no earth nor sky there is no wind nor water amare re desh ma nahi chanda nahi suraj nahi koi navlakh tara in my land there is no sun no moon nor the 9 billion stars amare re desh ma nahi brahma nahi vishnu nahi koi shankar deva in my land there is no brahma no vishnu no shiva all these different gods different religions different sects so this land is beyond all these divisions separations which cause all the human conflict that we experience in our lives and when he calls us into this land he is inviting us into a dimension which is beyond these divisions separations and conflicts and the message of kabir and the sufis is constantly is that this dimension is within us we don't have to look for it somewhere else in a temple or in a mosque or in any holy book or in any kind of dogma or orthodoxy because this other dimension can be accessed right here in our own bodies in the end he says manjale re manjale ik sant jai pahunchya kabir sant chadyo re nirvan step by step a true seeker arrives at her destination kabir who is a true seeker arrived at the station of nirvana at the station of liberation
amare re des mai nai dharanai gagna amare re des mai nai dharanai gagna nahi koi pavan nahi pani ire sadho nahi koi pavan nahi pani So these poets say when you arrive into this dimension, that is when you can really taste the true taste of love. So they begin to talk about love only when you come here, not earlier. Love is a very high state according to these poets. So the next song I will think, I think I will sing uh, one more song and then I will take some questions if there are any questions um, after this song. Uh, so after uh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Rajasthan, three different dialects, I want to go to Punjab and sing uh, in Punjabi. And this song uh, <clears throat> is by a Sufi poet called Bulesha, Baba Bulesha, who's in the same tradition as Kabir and all the other Bhakti and Sufi poets. And this uh, song uh, talks about love. <clears throat> and there is a short story um, about the song. So I'll first share the story and then I will sing the song for you. 
So in the Bulasha was um, a Sayyid, which means he was uh, a descendant, his family was a descendant from the Prophet uh, himself. And so they are considered high. Uh, so you still have this high and low, even though in Islam you're not supposed to have all these things. So uh, he was a high caste person. But as he grew up, he became uh, very interested in the Sufi path. And he met his uh, Murshid, his guru, Shah Inayat. And Shah Inayat was from a lower caste. So when uh, Bule Shah started to hang out with uh, Shah Inayat, his family objected. Why do you have to go to this person? He's from a low family. You should find someone else and so on. But Bule Shah said, no, I don't care about these things. Uh, he's my guru. He's my Murshid. And I'm devoted to him. So Bulisha was very always uh, obviously reverential to his guru, but you know caste is a strange thing. So Shah Inayat saw Bulisha behaving badly with a fellow disciple from a lower caste. And when Shah Inayat saw this, he said, you are not fit to be my disciple, he said to Bulisha, because you still have this arrogance of, of caste in you. You still have this pride in you of your caste. And so I you are no longer my disciple, go away, I disown you. So Bule Shah is banished uh, from Shah Inayat's um, Silsila. And so um, Bule Shah is disconsolate, he realizes his mistake. And then he thinks, what, what, what must I do to win back the trust of my guru? So he um, knows that Shah Inayat really used to like sing song and dance. He used to go and watch uh, so singing and dancing. So he goes uh, to the lady who performs for Shah Inayat and he says, uh, will you be my guru? Will you take me as your disciple? I want to learn how to sing and how to dance from you. So she accepts him as uh, her disciple. And so Bule Shah for many months, he trains under her learning how to sing and dance so as to please his master. And when his teacher, the, uh, the dancer, she says that now you are ready to perform, Shah Inayat arrives. He doesn't know Bulisha is going to perform for him. And Bulisha sings and dances for Shah Inayat. And Shah Inayat is pleased because he says, OK, now you have let go of your pride. You have let go of your arrogance. You have let go of your self. So this song relates to this story. And in this song, Bule Shah says, Tere ishq nachaya karke thaiya thaiya, cheti avi ve tabiba naita me mar gaya. Your love has made me dance like mad. He says, Come quickly, O healer, O doctor. He calls him a healer. Uh, otherwise, I will die. Then he says, Tere ishq ne dera mere dil ich kita. Your love has made a home in my heart. And this cup of poison, I drank of my own accord. What is the cup of poison? Love is the cup of poison because it destroys you. It destroys your sense of self, your sense of identity. You go beyond it. Then he says, uh, Sanu kible te kabe to sona yaar disinda. Sanu ghayal karke phir khabar na lenda. In the forest of this love, a peacock calls out. And more beautiful than Kaaba or Kibla or any holy site for me is the site of my Murshid, my beloved, my Guru. And he says he wounded me and now he doesn't even ask about me. So that is the love. It, love is cruel. <laughs> The beloved wounds you and then he goes away. Chup gaya ve suraj bahar reh gai lali ve mein sad ke hoon vaan deve murje ve khali Peera mein pul gaiya tere naal na gai It's as if the sun has set, my guru has gone and only the last remaining redness remains. I will give up my life to get just one glimpse of him. It was my mistake. I forgot you. I forgot what you taught me. Bulesha says, 
तेजी मरण कनु मैनू हटक न मुला मैनू मरण का शौक ने भावन दे कंजरी बनया मेरी इज्जत नी घट दी मैनू नच के यार मनावन दे तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया करके थैया थैया छेतिया विव तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया छेती बाणी में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया करके थैया थैया छेतिया विव तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया तेरे इश्क ने डेरा मेरे दिल च किता तेरे इश्क ने डेरा मेरे दिल च किता बर के जहर पियाला मैं तापे पीता बर के जहर पियाला मैं तापे पीता मेरे कामिल मुर्शिद मेरे कामिल मुर्शिद मेरे कामिल मुर्शिद उन में पार लगैया छेतिया में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया छेती बाणी में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया करके थैया थैया छेतिया में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया छुप गया वे सूरज बाहर रह गई लाली छुप गया वे सूरज बाहर रह गई लाली वे मैं सद के ओवा देवे मुरझे वे खाली वे मैं सद के ओवा देवे मुरझे वे खाली पीर में पुल गईया पीर में पुल गईया पीर में पुल गईया तेरे नाल न गईया छेतिया में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया छेती बाणी में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया करके थैया थैया छेतिया में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया इस इश्क दे झंगी च मोर बुलाइंदा इस इश्क दंगी बिच मोर बुलाइंदा सानू की बुल ते का बे सोना यार दिसाइंदा सानू की बुल ते का बे सोना यार दिसाइंदा सानू घायल करके सानू घायल करके सान घायल करके फिर खबर न लेतिया भी मैं तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया छेती बाणी में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर गया तेरे इश्क नचाया 
तेरे इश्क नचाया तेरे इश्क नचाया करके थैया थैया छेतियाँ में तभी छेती बाणी में तभी छेतियाँ में तभी नहीं तो मैं मर धनिया थैंक यू Sanjukta, are you there? If there are any questions, I am uh, happy to take them. Um, yeah, I think we have some uh, interesting questions already. Uh -huh. um, people are very curious about how you remember languages, but I'm just going to um, I think there was one question earlier, which I kind of answered, thinking it was quite urgent. Um, there's one question related to, uh, you know, that the person cannot understand the meanings of the words, but I explained that um, many of this you're actually explaining, but not probably every word, but the, but the meaning of the song is definitely coming out from your explanations, and you also explain the philosophical base of those songs. Um, there's one question from Kevin Webb, uh, which is what age you started to perform and who were your teachers uh, or gurus? Uh, and you, I, I would add that you wanted uh, to say something about your influences that would help. Um, there's an anonymous attendee um, who's got an interesting question here. Uh, thank you for the curation. Um, is this form of spirituality and outlook of equalization reflected in playing and hearing this music? Something that was perceived as an act of dissidence at the time. Uh, I, I believe he's talking about the historical time, but obviously the, there's something you can comment on, you know, whether it's an act of dissidence uh, in the past and present. Um, yes. And then there's also, are you family also musician? I mean, I, it's up to you if you want to take these questions now or maybe a bit later, but. Um, no, sure, I'm happy to take them now. Uh, yeah. Then yeah. The next question. Just but two, three, there, there's more, it seems. Yeah. So it's great so that the question has brought in so many questions, yeah. Yes, let me answer these three briefly and then I'm even happy to take more. Um, so, uh, Personally, um, no, my family are not musicians. Uh, I myself uh, am not trained as a musician. I always like to sing. But when I came into contact with the folk tradition of Kabir, so many of us in India, in the cities, grow up uh, without knowing anything about the folk mm -hmm. Kabir, which is sung. And that's the original form of Kabir's communication because, as I said, he did not read or write he sang and his songs have traveled and they have survived for over 500 years because people sing them, not necessarily because they are written down, but because they are given from body to body. So it's an embodied tradition. Um, and this tradition is quite old in many parts of India. It's still alive in the villages, uh, in the rural parts. And when I first uh, heard it, I was quite uh, blown away. and. That was the beginning of the journey in 2008 for me to engage with this tradition and I started to uh, sing and perform only in 2012. Uh, so not uh, very long ago or not since uh, a young age. Uh, and my teachers have been, uh, uh, Prehlad Tipania is a very well-known folk singer from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, he's traveled around the world, he's performed around the world, uh, and now this folk tradition has becoming more mainstream, and uh, people are recognizing it in the cities and even in the West and so on. And so, uh, he, him, he was one of my primary teachers, Shabnam Virmani, who's a filmmaker yeah. and yeah. Uh, the founder of the Kabir Project. She's the director of the Kabir Project, so we had, uh, I had the good fortune to work with her for a long time. And we worked on many books, we worked on books together, we worked on a huge web archive together of these songs with translations. And uh, she also, like me, started to sing uh, when she came in contact with the folk tradition. And then she was my teacher, I was, um, I was learning from her. And the other influences were 
like I said, different musicians from different parts of the country. Mahisha Ramji from Rajasthan. He embodies a different folk tradition, which is from Rajasthan. Mura Lalaji from Gujarat. So these are all folk singers, um, and they have all been very influential on me personally. And um, But the folk tradition is much wider. There are many more singers. As to the second uh, question which you asked, um, uh, Sanjutka, yes, it, it is an act of dissent. It is an act of dissidence in some sense, because especially at that time and even now in many places, it's a tradition that has uh, belonged to the lower castes in some sense, because, I mean, Kabir himself was a low caste person, Ravidas. Um, so many of these same poets have been low caste people. And they, because they were not allowed to go into temples, they, they said something quite revolutionary uh, at that time and even now. He said, you don't need to go into the temple because your body is your own temple. And you don't need to go and worship in front of some god or an idol, or you don't need to go to the mosque and bow, because whatever you are looking for, that divinity, that spark of light, is right here in you. And so your entire practice is here with your own self. And the self becomes the site of this radical transformation and radical empowerment. So it's a greatly empowering tradition. It empowers you because, uh, I mean, for example, just to quote one song of Kabir, it's it's a remarkable song, but he says, Ya ghat bhitar baag bagiche ya hi mein sirjan hara. In this body, endless gardens. And the creator of these gardens also in this body. Ya ghat bhitar saat samandar ya hi mein no lakhtara. All the seven oceans are contained in this body. All the nine billion stars are contained in this body. So the entire universe, this body is the site of the entire universe. And you can experience this in your own body. And so this is a greatly empowering tradition. And the music itself also. So like uh, someone said, the music also is a great equalizing influence because everyone sings in the satsang. When you get together in the village and sit under a tree at night after the day's work is done, you've done your farming, you've done your weaving or whatever it is. At night, it is cool. You, in the days are usually hot in India. And you, it's cool at night and you sit under the tree or in the village square and everyone participates. So everyone is singing, everyone is playing, someone is playing the manjira, someone is playing khartal, someone is playing tambura. All the people know the song, so everyone is singing together. It's not about, you know, being able to sing in a great uh, classical manner, not at all. The, the spirit yeah. of, the, of the song catches you. And then you become one body of uh, people who are transformed by the song. So, so it is all these things that, uh, that, that were mentioned, yes. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing that uh, I'm glad you mentioned because, um, you know, this is one thing I was thinking when I thought of uh, bringing you in is, um, is the way people sit around the musician now. So the interaction has got absolutely no hierarchy in these kind of spaces where even now that um, you go to large festivals, uh, you, you have a backdrop of the palace, the lit up palace. You know, now Sufi music is going to the palace ambience even. But even then, I think you're using the courtyard space quite a lot where people are sitting around and um, it's whether it's clapping or other gestures, because these are the things we want to bring in looking at the more ethnographic details of uh, how the music is being practiced now. And I noticed that even some of them are get, bringing their own instruments to join in as if yes. even if it's a staged performance, you are allowing that flexibility to happen, that you kind of part of that stage. So even if there is a hierarchy where, not quite hierarchy, but people are sitting in different steps, they are quite close to the musician, not like a stage stage. So I just feel that the, the way it's all done now is to send this message out as well. Um, I'm going to look at some other questions. Um, which is, how do you remember all the different languages and so many songs of different genre? 
I think this is one question that is going to come up because you know, you're singing in different languages without a script in front of you. So whether that's oral tradition or the way you memorize things, or you believe in the memory of oral tradition, that's another thing that um, is something we'd like to know. But I'll take one more point here. How do you explain many male Sufis assuming feminine form while talking to their masters? Amir Khusru talks about his marriage to Nizamuddin. Nanak talks about his transformation from Duhagan to Suhagan. That's Hussein Jasani, who is asked the second question, and R. Pat, who's asked about the different language question. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Yes. Quickly, we don't have much time, I think. So, yeah. um, um, how do I remember different languages? It's by singing. So sometimes I do keep the words in front of me because a song that I'm not been singing for a long time, I will forget it. But a song that I've been singing very often, it enters my body. And it's true for all the singers, all the singers say this. And a, a quick anecdote, one of the folk singers told me that the generation which did not read or write, they remembered over 100 songs without needing any script. They didn't have any script anyway. And the generation then which started to read and write and wrote down all the songs, they couldn't remember half the songs because then they were relying on the script, you know, uh, in front of them. So this is part of the orality and the embodiment that you embody the song. The song inhabits your body. And then even while you're singing it, you keep, you remember it. Okay, this follows this and so on. So that's a quick answer to the first one. And a quick answer to the second one is it's a, actually a very big point. It will take a longer time to explain, but uh, very quickly in a minute. Uh, the, the main point is that the male ego is held to be uh, higher than the female ego because of traditional gender hierarchies that have been imposed since centuries. So because the gender hierarchy already exists socially and culturally, the male tends to take himself very seriously. This, these are broad generalizations, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so for a, a male seeker to, to climb down from his perch, to climb down from his high so-called station of identity, pride, arrogance, so on, it takes the female form in order to embody humility. And the also the second point, the ability to feel and love. Because from men, the ability to feel and love was sort of cast aside, cut away from men. So men have not been traditionally allowed to feel. They are allowed to intellectualize, they are allowed to go out and do things and so on. I'm talking traditionally what has uh, happened. And so the ability to feel, the ability to surrender, the ability to love, the ability to give yourself, these uh, were traditionally held to be feminine virtues. And so the spiritual path is very much a feminine path in that sense. And you have to be and so they say in the tradition that it's it's uh, it's easier for a female seeker than for a male seeker in this path. Yeah, um, we are we are coming close to finishing this session, which is very unfortunate. Um, I think there is one more question that is really related to how can we learn from you? And there's another question of CD perhaps for compilation. I mean, you're not short of CDs. Anyone can find you and and buy stuff and and contact you for learning um so i is there a final question i think we are nearly towards the end of the quest oh okay oh sorry there's there are two more questions it seems nine questions so i mean mm -hmm. we are really running short of time now so, but, but we can take a few more because i think ricky can spare two three minutes um, there is a comment from Naomi. Uh, I know her. She's a scholar herself on Tagore. And could you please comment on Rabindranath Tagore? Uh, of course, I know that Tagore was influenced by vowel music in a, in a big way, and he tried to mainstream that, but I won't be answering for you. And truly transformative lyrics, thank you, would be the last uh, question that we can take. Um, okay. I'm sure uh, the lyrics are still transforming, but your final comments. Yes. Uh, well, uh, on Tagore, uh, Tagore uh, was the first to translate Kabir into English. So 100 songs of Kabir uh, were translated by Tagore. That's the first English translation. So he was 
very familiar with Kabir and uh, also the Baul masters, the Baul songs from Bengal and his own Rabindra Shangit and his own poetry, uh, especially Gitanjali. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I've only read it in English, uh, but the the spirit is exactly the same. The spirit of uh, of uh, seeking this other dimension, which paradoxically lies within us, and yet it's other to us. We remain alienated from it. So I find that very alive in, in, in Tagore. And he speaks with that same voice of, uh, uh, you know, a larger pursuit, a larger quest, uh, which uh, all these poets are uh, looking for. And I mean, of course, uh, my CD, uh, CDs are online, songs are online. There's a website, ishkfakiri.com, where the songs are available for free. So you can download them and you can find the words and translations. And I do monthly sessions to teach um, songs. Yeah, I just wondered if you wanted to say anything about Ajab Shahar. Is that an evolving project? Is it sort of developing as you travel or your own journeys, something like yeah. that? Because I think Sufi's yeah. got that mobile message now as well. Yes, Ajab Shahar uh, is a, has been a huge project over, uh, uh, over a decade long project because it involved a lot of travel in different parts of India and some in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Uh, documenting a lot of Bhakti Sufi music, some Baul music from Parvati Baul also, and then editing it, uh, make, uh, you know, making videos, uh, transcribing, transliterating, translating, and writing um, about this philosophy. So if you go to ajabshaher.com, you will find a lot of these songs in the original singer's voices, the folk singer's voices, along with translations and write-ups by me uh, on... Um, the different philosophical underpinnings of these songs, uh, the different ideas and concepts. And Ajab Shaher now is more or less uh, only the final uh, drops are left of, we have so much documentation that we stop documenting at some point because the tradition is endless and yeah. you always want more songs. But uh, the, we are just putting out the remaining already edited songs that we have. Well, thank you, Ricky. I mean, you have opened up so many different ways of continuing this conversation. Firstly, the whole point about bringing the discussion back to the body, the body as the site for uh, transmitting the knowledge of uh, the Sufi practitioners. And that is something we will visit now in the next session where we have Kawali as a product, where the discussion is really about, you know, ritual and body and dance uh, coming together in music. Um, so thank you for that. And of course, uh, this program was part, um, you know, partly to do with decolonizing uh, knowledge, but uh, the focus was also about language. So you did uh, bring out the whole issue of translation, which itself becomes complex when the translator is able to move so much between oral tradition and print and uh, you know, create a large translation project as you have created, but that's for another time. And I want to thank you again for joining us and I hope to see you for another session pleasure. in SOAS. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure, thank you. Thank you. Um, we uh, will try and connect now with um, other participants uh, who are going to come for the second session. Um, I've got to really revisit the panel and see if our panelists have arrived because they're trying to join from Bangladesh and um, I need to be able to connect to the panel now. If I can see the other panelists, if we can bring the other panelists as uh, Professor Jaffer, who is with us. Um, do we have uh, other singers waiting to join from among the participants? Um, uh, I can see Hanan Husseini, who is going to join the panel for another round. So I'm going to have to promote him to being a panelist, it's the way he's joined. Um, is it Arman? He's got to be also 
promoted to panelist. I've asked Sajjad to, to join as well. So if you can join as panelists, please. I try to contact them from here. Yes, it's it's just maybe they just decided to join as panelists, waiting to be promoted. Um, sorry, they yes. joined as participants rather than panelists. Are there only two at the moment? Um, I'm unable to find um, Arman Khan. Uh, who is, I think Arman Arman yeah. is here. Yeah, Arman is there, but Arman uh, from India. Yeah, Arman Fakir from India. Yeah, is he there? Has he actually joined the panel? Is what I'm trying to see. Arman is there. Arman from Bangladesh is there. Yes. I think Hanan Hussaini is also coming. Yeah, I've invited him to join the panel. Um, can the tech team see, please, if uh, anybody is waiting or is, has anyone else joined the panel already? Hanan Hussaini is to join. I think he's coming. Okay. But what about Arman Fakir? He's not here still. Arman Fakir, I, uh, I see he's there in the panel. Arman is here? No, no, that's Arman yeah. from Bangladesh. I'm talking about Arman Fakir from India. Is he here? I, uh, I see Sajjad Hussain, Sajjad Hussain Arman of B Bangladesh is in the panel. He is there. Yes, I know, I can see him. Oh. I'm just say, w wondering if someone has joined with a different name, which can be an issue here. Nan Hussaini from Bangladesh. I think he is also trying, but to join. Enter. Okay. Um, I think um, without sort of we can we can. I mean, I was hoping that Arman Fakir is going to join, but I've just received a message, and I don't see any harm in um, stating. Although I would have liked him to speak rather than me speaking. Um, he's got a very bad flu, and I've got just a message now. Uh, so his son is trying to help him to uh, join, and, and maybe he will join a bit later. Um, but that's not um, stopping us from continuing our discussion. So uh, the next uh, part of <coughs> the um, session will be about decolonizing Bengal Kawal. And uh, we, we already had a session on Sufi music, but um, this particular uh, part of the discussion is how it is integrated with local culture. Uh, we know that Sufi poetry has been the source for the genre of Sufi music, lyrics in folk and kawali as cultural products of the philosophic verses. Um, I was the way I structured it is that you know the voice of the artist should also be the voice. Um, of how he experiences the Kawali himself, and he's able to explain that. So the attempt here wasn't to explain all the words myself, but to have Arman Fakir come here and explain his own emotions with his own music. Um, but fortunately, we have Professor uh, MD Jafar here with us, and uh, he is very well versed in both Bengali and other regional languages from Chittagong, which is reflective of another tradition of the Kawal that we are going to present here from the Mej Mandari um, tradition. And we also have Sajjad Hussein Arman, who is one of the singers um, who, who can also tell us about how he connects with the songs. Um, so, the, the, the um, point here is that we wanted to look at the relatively lesser known, oh, there is, a, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we can see how, uh, you know, if we can, 
uh, if we can sort of get him to speak a bit later, maybe we can run the music now. Okay. So <clears throat> I just wanted to say that the focus is also here on vernacular language and the anti-communal uh, lineages of folk music that we have already spoken about and how <clears throat> pre-partition composite music, um, which is uh, also true for the post-partition uh, memory of the homeland. And we will hear um, from Arman how uh, Kawali is practiced in Nodia, from where he's based. Nodia is a small, uh, is, is a district of West Bengal. Um, so the session is partly West Bengal and partly um, Bangladesh. But we are also on the border area where much of this transaction between the two countries often yes. happen and they are continually happening. So it's a very evolving tradition in that sense as well. So Arman is also, has also imbibed the Fakir tradition of introspection and, and thinking about the self. And even in his delivery of the songs, you know, you will see how he continually points towards his self and he talks of the self in the song quite a lot. So the Fakiri tradition of introspection, and there is a deep thought on poverty, where poverty is not something that you engage with just, but you also label it as if poverty is some kind of a pride. It's something to show. So the, the way he connects with the song is also an attempt to show his own village, how the people in the village are surrounding uh, his, his um, site where he practices his kawali. And he's able to show that as well. Um, so Arman Fakir is, is an extremely distinguished um, singer uh, and we are very, very fortunate to have him live just now. And he's going to speak briefly in his own language, the oral tradition of the regional Kawal, which is also adapting to the popular language and the everyday. So this is another thing about the Kawali that it is not uh, something that is static, something to discuss about perhaps, how technology is also evolving, uh, how Kawali is also relating to technology and it is connecting with the everyday and the popular language. So the performance of the Kawali, I just want to very briefly mention, many of you know what Kawali, but just in case it knocks your senses at this moment, that it's not really a solo artist, it's a group performance and it has the traditional tolak uh, so the music can be a bit loud if you want to adjust the volume when you're listening. And there's also portable harmonium. And there is a, there's a loud sound. I mean, many of you know Kawali, but for those who don't know, that we're trying to blend certain instruments and certain traditions, even in bowel music, which is a string instrument you will find in particularly Arman's delivery, different from the Maj Bhandari lot. Um, but the Kawali performance here showcases some kind of a ritualistic element and a ritual character. And later we will see more of the kind of spaces within which this Kawali tradition is also evolving. So I'll leave it um, right now at that. And let me try and show Arman's uh, performance that he specially did for this um, session. Ase gone de awana, moroner hoy kore na, moroner age more, orosita janina. 
আসে গণ দেওয়ানা
fantastic i mean i just wanted to before um we lose um if if we can just yeah ask to unmute jai guru namaskar arman am um, amra uh, don't know i'm sorry uh, we have to speak in Arman's own uh, language, because I think that gives him the freedom to explain what his song is about. And then we can connect uh, with the discussion as to how, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Arman, ekto khani bolun je ki ganta amra shunlam ar bangla kawal কিভাবে মানে আপনি এখন করেন মানে বাংলা কাওয়াল নদিয়াতে কিভাবে এখন চলছে সেটা নিয়ে যদি আপনার নিজের নিজের কথাটাই বলুন মানে গানটার মধ্যে দিয়ে আপনি কি দেখলেন কি শুনলেন এবং এখন কি মনে হচ্ছে সেটাই যাই গুরু আমরা তো মূলত লালন ফকিরের শিল্পী তবে আমার গুরুদেব বাংলাদেশি বাড়ি কুষ্টিয়ায় উনি ওই বাংলা কাওয়ালে লিখেন সেই গানগুলাই আমি নদিয়াতে কলকাতাতে প্রচার করি এবং আপনাদের লন্ডনে গেছি ফ্রান্সে গেছি ওগুলাতেও শুনি এসছে এই গান এই গান মূলত আল্লাহ নবীর মানে যারা ভক্ত আশিকান তারা ঈশ্বরকে গুরুকে কিভাবে ডাকে সেই রাস্তার কথাবার্তা এই বাংলা কাওয়ালি গান বাংলা কাওয়াল এখন নদিয়াতে যেটা রয়েছে সেটা কি মানে বাউলের সঙ্গে কোনো পেছনে কিছু কোন ইতিহাস আছে কি কেন এই গানটা আপনি পছন্দ করলেন আমাদের এখানে গাইবার জন্য সেটাও আমি একটু জানতে চাই এই গানগুলা আশিক দেশের গান এগুলা যারা বড় বড় ওলিয়াল্লা ভক্ত মানে কি বলবো যারা এসকের দেওয়ানা সেই দেওয়ানাদের এই গানটা মূলত মানে আল্লাহ নবী যে প্রেম করেছিল সেই প্রেম যাতে গুরুর সাথে সেই শিশুটা করতে পারে সেইভাবে এসকে দেশের গান জাফর সাহেব ডিড ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু সে এনিথিং টু দ্য সং দ্যাট Arman is talking about anything specific. Would you like to comment anything at this stage? Thank you very much, Ms. Sanjukta. I as well thank the authority of the University of Swaz UK. Uh, I am very much proud that I am invited here to speak something on it. Though I am not fit for the session at all. You are fit for the session. You can speak in what and language. If you I'm, want to say anything uh, about the songs in Bengali, it. that is also fine. Okay. Uh, my country, my nation is fought for our language and sacrificed lives. My great leader, Bangladesh great leader, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, when spoke in the UN, he also spoke in Bengali. So in honor of them, I would like, if you kindly allow me to speak in Bengali. Please, sir. It is my emotion. 
Yes. I may I may feel free to talk and I may explore my emotions. Please allow me to talk in Bengali. Yeah, I mean, if we can just, uh, for this moment, we'll move to Maj Bhandari, but we want to just hear, you know, if you want to say anything about uh, Arman's song that he just sang. Yes. Um, okay. Actually, uh, what do you feel about Kavali? Hmm. Uh, the song just we have heard before three minutes. In my idea, it is, uh, we, we cannot uh, tell it as Bangla Kawal, as because it is some sort of uh, Sufi music. All Sufi musics are not Bangla Kawal. And in his uh, comments, we saw that uh, relation with God, with Murshid as well. Mm. But in, the, in his, in his uh, saying, nothing we, we got about the, uh, about God, about Allah, about Bhagavan. But in the uh, Bangla Kawali, hmm. those are clearly written, yes. which is originated from Rumi, Sheikh Saadi, and lastly, it was uh, regenerated to Amir Khashru of Bangla uh, Kawa for Bangla Kawal, uh, Kawali which was written in Persi, Arabic, and Urdu as well in Hindi. But Kaji Nazrul Islam converted in, in Bengali. As well, our Maizbhandari songs were written at that time in from 1906. <laughs> From 1900, uh, within within uh, within 30, 1930, it was written. So, uh, I think uh, there is uh, something different in the, in the, in the light of songs tradition. or in the style of singing. That is gaioki. Hmm. It will be clear when uh, my husband is singer will. Uh, okay. Sing there. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I just um, wanted to, um, Arman, Amra Onno Gantai Jai, Taj Nure Jetapni Kuratsan. Ah, those she got a Kanikota Bolo can order the Dakache, almost the Jai Gata, Jacknapni Ganta Kotsin. So we want to move to um, another piece that uh, Arman has prepared. And I want to share that now. Thank you. Taj nure ya miya, Taj nure ya miya soyo de shulta, Allah mehirban, O khuda mehirban.
Bye. 
Arman. Um, uh, আমি শুনতে পাচ্ছি না এটাকে আনমিউট করতে হবে তো জি সাউন্ড কো আপনি গেলে দেখা যাবে প্রথমে যে শুরুটা করলেন সৈয়দের সুলতান মানে নবী তো সে তাজনুরের ছিল নুরের আলোতে তাজনুরের ছিল সেই নুরের নবীর কথা বলছে তাই আল্লাহ মেহরবান তাই হজুর পাকে এরকম একটা জায়গায় পৌঁছেছে আমরা এইভাবে অনেক গানই এইভাবে আল্লাহ নবীর কোন গান গাই সেটা লালন ফকির গানে আছে মূলত আমাদের এই সাধনা করি সেই সাধনা যে ধারা করা রাস্তায় কিভাবে উনি আল্লাহদের দর্শন পেতে হয় রুহানি জগতের এটা এই গানটা তো মূলত রুহানি জগতে সেই রুহানি জগতের যারা এসে আমল করে সেই আমলের পরিপ্রেক্ষিতে এই গলাকে বোঝা যায় এমনি শুনি শোনা কথা তো হয় না তাই আমরা যেগুলো গুণ গান করছি আল্লাহ নবীর যাতে আমার পরে সেই রকম বর্ষিত হয় আমরাও সেই জায়গাটাতে তার ধারে কাছে কিঞ্চিত পরিমাণ যেতে পারি এসে আমাদের সময় ভীষণ কম আমরা হয়তো শেষ গানটা হয়তো দেখাতে পারলাম না অন্য কোন সময় দেখাবো আনাদার সেশন জাফর সাহেব মেবি ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু সে এনিথিং টু what uh, arman has just said about the song i think there is a lot of uh, there's a different kind of language here and um, you know we we picked up lots of words like surma for instance you know so there's a there's a lot of influence of different languages even in this song and uh, that is something very very typical of bengal kawal because the in one of things that we wanted to to show in this program is that you know there is this understanding of the urdu influence in kawal and as a regionally uh, urdu kawal kind of dominates but that is not the case with bengal kawal we see how the evolution of the bengali language is also about the mixture of um, you know words from farsi persian and other influences and that is something stays on with this kind of a regional kawal so that um, you know we those of us who are who are able to uh, listen to the lyrics more carefully and understand that we could see these influences working quite seamlessly as if it's kind of blending in the in the song very easily as well as uh, the way he is delivering there is a traditionality of kawal bringing in all the artists and the musicians but at the same time he's drawing that um, just want to divert a bit oh je apni je mane jeta bajacchen sei ta to sadharonoto kawale to byabohar kora hoy na mane kawali te to seta sadharonoto byabohar kora na ei tai ei tai ki baul fakiri etar thekei to ei jontro tar mane byabohar jeta korchen setai karon sadharonoto amra ei dholok harmonium etai to dekhi mane jeta ek mane taratar modhe jeta byabohar korchen seta কি শুধু নদিয়াতেই হয় নাকি অন্য জায়গাতেও বেঙ্গলের অন্য জায়গাতেও কি এটা ব্যবহার করা 
সেটাই জিজ্ঞেস করছি আপনার ওইটা শুনতে পাচ্ছি না শুনতে পাচ্ছি না অন্য জায়গাতেও অন্য কাওয়াল যেটা আমরা নদী ছাড়াও মুর্শিদাবাদে যেটা হয় সেটাও কি একই রকম মানে সেখানেও কি ব্যবহার করা হচ্ছে আমরা তো কাওয়ালের অন্য যন্ত্র নাই আমরা এগুলা ফকিরি গান করি ফকিরি গানের যে যন্ত্রপাতি সেইগুলা দিয়ে আমি কাওয়ালি শুনেছি মূলত হারমোনিয়াম ব্যঞ্জন আর ঢোল হইলে আমাদের কাওয়ালি গান হয় কিন্তু সে সময় তো আমাদের সেরকম যন্ত্রপাতি নাই তাই আশ্রমে যে যন্ত্র ছিল সেই যন্ত্র দিয়ে আমি গান শুনেছি so that 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 is you know that kind of sums up the message that he gives out uh, that he is able to adapt the various instruments that he finds in the ashram where nadia has got that tradition of uh, baul and vaishnavite tradition which is there you know jafar bhai you will know that nadia was the seat of chaitanya's vaishnavism yeah. and so i wanted this is the reason why i wanted to have arman for this performance is to actually show how vaishnavism tradition right from the Uh, you know 500 years old and kind of influences the urdu based kawal and the kawal tradition and how that transforms in the everyday life of the ashram acha jekhane apni gaan ta korchen ota to nijer bari naki ota ashram ashram eta ashram ashram okay so we got to see his own ashram which is the learning institution and we also saw uh the the thatched roof and the way it's all kind of it felt as if it was his house but no it's not his house it's where all his disciples are around and that is his ashram ashram mane ki eta hocche khali kawaler i bangla kawaler ashram mane okhane ki shudhu kawal shekhano hoy na 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 bibhinno dhoron amra moloto phokir manus phokiri gan kori amar gurudev ei bangla kawale likheche shei jonno ami bangla kawale gula gei thaki acha আর ভালো হয়ে যাও তাড়াতাড়ি Yeah, I want to quickly try and move the discussion to Mez Bhandari and uh, Mez Bhandari uh, music, which is a segment of the Marfati Gan. Uh, <clears throat> it's a very distinct uh, genre of Bengali Sufi folk music that is centered on the Mez Bhandari saints. And this is something also I wanted to raise with Jafar Sahib that, you know, this is really about the Mez Bhandari saints. which again helps us to decolonize the perception of the kawali practice in the main as a derivative of the north indian pakistani urdu based performance whereas majmandari represents the song that are very socially conscious and is uh, for instance is very much obvious in the writings of the legendary poet ramesh shil whose song will be um, there in the program and we have an artist with us as well so the songs also have proximity again just as uh, the bengal kawal we saw to the arabic and the persian languages and the words the presentation style again is evident in kawals by mixing the multilingual words that are in line with the evolution of the bengali language in undivided bengal and the songs also have regional profiles that are known to exist in the hilly tracts of chittagong and uh, we managed to spread the news of this event in chittagong as well where um, the hilly the local language that is very distinct from how we understand the national bangla language it's very different from that and it constitutes many of the lesser known other folk genres as well So the regional vernacular song of Mej Bhandari is, as we will see, we, if we have time, we should make the time 
to uh, run through all the rich humanist content that is very much rooted in current practice as well. And the way Majmandari songs are connected to um, not only sociocultural practices, yeah. but it responds to current contents, like even how it, during the pandemic, we can see how these are related to philanthropic work and everything um, and, and the social work around it. So um, the, the other important thing is that these uh, Maj Bhandari songs are sung in the local assemblies, the dargas, which have, which have a huge following even among Hindus, Christians, Buddhists, and the hilly population. So it is definitely a source of uh, in social memory. And this is another point that uh, perhaps Jaffa Sahib would mention, how people relate to the current restoration of the shrine of uh, Ramesh Shil. You know, how people look up, there was, there was a lot of, uh, because Ramesh Shil is a, is a writer who stayed in Bangladesh during the partition and didn't want to leave Bangladesh and come as a refugee to West Bengal. So he held on to that anti-communal stance and he, and he stayed and lived in Bangladesh to a point that his shrine now is, is a rally point for social memory as well as uh, for the Hindus and Muslims it means a lot to come back to that shrine. So some of these are represented in the Bengal Kawal, and there is a lot of speculation currently on how we contextualize uh, the Kawal within the syncretic uh, Islamic tradition of the regional Eastern states. So we wanted to um, uh, also have that in the discussion. So let's let's sort of uh, look at uh, one of these Kawal uh, presentations first. तुम्हारे द्वार हमने जैन के हो खाली हाथ गरीब के करे जो धनी एक अंगुले रोकी शराब अमर भागे दूर खुले दा अमर भागे दूर खुले दा
Um, Arman, um, welcome to the show. Um, I just want to quickly show a little bit of what you presented, because I think it brings out Ramesh Shil, and we will conclude by that discussion. Because I think um, Hossein, who, who sang the song, was also there as a participant, but I can't see him at the moment. Um, but that was a, a very typical sort of Majmandari Kawal where uh, we saw um, the, the delivery is all around. And it's also um, that, can we, can we just visit your song? And then we, we, we managed to see a little bit about the trust's activities that are also going around that time. And it is connecting to a lot of social message because people need to know that, you know, this, this production is also uh, part of the Mez Mandari Trust and uh, all the musicians belong to that trust and uh, the kawal is being used uh, to to mobilize many of the people around the so social and the cultural issues um, that we see. So uh, Jafar Sab, if you just within a minute, if you can just reflect on the kawali itself, the, the specific characteristic of this kawali. And then I will just show a snippet of uh, <clears throat> Anne's production because we really cannot uh, extend this session, but we will certainly have another occasion for a, a bigger discussion on Mez Pandari. So uh, anything specific about this, uh, the character of the Kawa? Character of what? Mez Pandari. Uh, just now we heard um, Hanan's, Hanan's uh, 
लेखकारी घरानार অতি প্রিয় একজন মানুষ একজন মাইস ভান্ডারী ঘরানার প্রিয়জন তখনই হয় যখন এই মাইস ভান্ডারী তরিকার সাথে নিজে একাত্ম হয়ে যায় তার এই মাইস ভান্ডারী তরিকায় যারা যায় তারা শুধু মাইস ভান্ডারী যে মুর্শিদ যে বলি তার কাছে তার জন্য যায় তা নয় তিনি যান তার মাধ্যমে আল্লাহর হাবিব তথা হজরত মোহাম্মদের মাধ্যম দিয়ে আল্লাহর কাছে যাওয়ার জন্য তার মূল গোল হলো আল্লাহকে পাওয়ার জন্য তাই এই এই কালামটাতে তথা এই কাওয়ালিটাতে সেই কথাই ক্লিয়ার ক্লিয়ার হয়েছে সেই কথাই বলতে চেষ্টা করা হয়েছে very a big characteristic of uh, the mais bhandari songs yeah yeah but i think uh, we don't have the time now to show armans but ramishil's uh, song that arman has got uh, connects again to the larger social and the cultural questions which begins with this kind of invocation of allah but then it takes you to a different realm of uh, a journey so uh, i'm very um, happy that we could collect a lot of the things there's there's a lot of time that goes connecting to artists bringing them in and we lose a lot of time there but i would like to thank uh, arman for your contribution and we will try and show this uh, your uh, performance on facebook or other means uh, so that you know people can see the performance i will find a way of uh, putting that on the social media and also keep that as some kind of a learning resource Uh, so thank you jafar um bye for joining us and also arman for joining us and we will end the session now thank you thank you uh and and just one word about question answers the good thing about not putting your questions on the chat but to question answer is that we are able to collect that and we are able to continue uh um, with the question answers on a different session and find a way of putting those answers uh to you in some way and you how you can expect it yes okay. we got we got very uh, small time yeah <laughs> thank you we've got thank lots you. of questions thank but you, we uh, we managed to put lots of questions to okay. suki song and practitioner ricky already so uh, we will certainly collect the questions and get back to with the answers uh, in a way that is uh, going to make everybody happy thank you again thank you very much thank okay. you very much once again